Well, I guess there was trans fluid in it. <laughs> well. Hi everybody, how are you? My name is Dan Dulac and welcome back to my channel where I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. This is episode number 41. If you missed any of the previous episodes, be sure to hit my channel, go check those out. It's been quite the journey over say the last two years and a lot to catch up on if you're new to my channel. I did recently put together a short 30 minute video on part one of the build kind of a summary up to the first 20 episodes. So if you're new to the channel and you're just interested in getting caught up very quickly, be sure to check that out on my channel as well. On this episode, we're gonna go through and review a few things. I've made some progress, albeit a little bit slow. I've got a lot of work to do, obviously, but I bled the brakes, got the brakes fully functioning and operational, tested the vacuum-assisted brake servo that I custom adapted to the car, and I've done a few other things here and there as well, so I'm excited to show you that. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, we are gonna go ahead and swap out the Mechatronic. This is the brand new Mechatronic I got, again, from a 2015 Huracan that does not have an electronic immobilizer. So that's good to go. I have got my printed instructions here. This is right out of the factory R8 transmission service manual. So I know what I'm doing there, I know what seals I need, torque specs, specs, etc. And then over here, I've already kind of moved the transmission oil cooler kind of out of the way here. And that gives me access to this back cover. So you can see it there. And well, there's eight or so T30 bolts. I've got to take off, they're not torqued on there very much at all. So I should be able to move this, slide this cover off and then kind of out the back here and that'll give me access. So thankfully the way this is lined up and in this tunnel area, there's, there's, there's some good room back here to work. So I'm pretty fortunate. From that standpoint, I don't have to remove the transmission or anything to get at this. So let me uh, set the camera up over here and we'll get after this. Well, I can't get that cover out without a little removal. So I think all I need to do is just remove the transmission mount here on the rear end. So that piece there. So I just got to jack up the trans a little bit to support it and then remove a few bolts. That will come off. And then this cover, I can slide just straight out the back. So that's what I'm going to do. I was hoping to not have to do that, but not a big deal. Let's do it. Now we got tons of room for festivities back here. This plate will easily come off now and just slide out. Yes. Eureka! Woo! Got it. 
All right, let's get this thing unbolted and get the new one swapped in. All right, well, I let my light charge a little bit. I got nine of these little bolts removed. And then there's two dowels that this mechatronic sits on. So I think if I just lightly pry on this, this will come apart and we should be good to go, so. Yep, exactly what it's gonna do. And there's some oil in there still. The old mech from the 2017 R8, and here is the new one from a 2015 Huracan. I checked the, the part numbers kind of embossed on the plastic there, and they are identical. So again, it's just the software on these. One has the immobilizer. This has no electronic immobilizer, and that's why I'm doing this swap. So good, I gotta transfer a couple of seals I noticed are missing from the old one to this one. And it looks like all the other O-rings are good to go on here. So let's get this back in the car. All right, here's what it looks like on the working end of the transmission where the mechatronic goes. If you ever wanted to see it, we're curious. There is a little harness that I had to unplug off the mech board, which is right there. I'm gonna tuck that out of the way while I put the new mech in there. But that's it. Should be good to go and swap that baby back in. And I am glad I did not have to remove this trans out of the car because <laughs> that means pulling the engine completely. So for future reference, this will make it pretty serviceable with this tucked in there in the transmission tunnel. Pretty happy about that. All right, let's look at the workshop manual. This says for these bolts holding the mech on, install by hand diagonally, then to eight Newton meters diagonally, and then diagonally additional 45 degree turn. Pretty straightforward, let's do it. got the transmission all buttoned back up again and uh, thankfully I made those transmission mounts very easy to get access to the bolts and, and remove so I could get to the back of the trans. Super, super easy. Uh, in the end, this came out really good. And the fact that I could get at this cover plate 
without removing the trans was a huge deal. So that is all done. One of the things I wanted to show you guys as well is something I fabbed up here for paddle shifters. I think I'm gonna reuse these Huracan paddle shifters here. And I made a column fixed mount for these shifters. Designed it up on CAD 3D printed with carbon fiber and nylon. And you can see the mechanism there. All the screws and mounts are hidden. I put a layer of epoxy, sanded it, then some body filler, sanded it, and then some satin paint. So this looks like somewhat of a molded plastic part. Came out really nice. The finish matches the paddles themselves. And so this will mount right on the dash. And I've got some hidden thread certs in there, three right into the housing. And I'll just drill some holes and those will mount screws will mount from the back side of the fiberglass dash which will be perfect so i think this is pretty trick again homage to the power plant the drivetrain coming out of the r8 and ultimately now i've kind of converted it back to a huracan and that'll be pretty trick so i'm psyched how that turned out then the next thing i'll do is i'm going to figure out i'll take the electronic board out of the electronic shifter mechanism here Put that board in a little project box maybe, solder some wires to the micro switches inside and then I can mount those micro switches or the switches, set of switches somewhere on the dash. So that way I won't have to use this kind of bulky housing uh, at all. I can, I can set it up custom. So that's pretty cool and we'll get to that eventually. First thing I'll update you guys on are the brakes. I temporarily mounted the brake fluid reservoir right here. Just a simple L bracket, a couple of rib nuts uh, there. When the body goes on, when the front cowl goes on right here, that brake reservoir is going to bolt to the fiberglass right about here. So I simply temporarily bolted yet. I'm not ready to put that front cowl on, so, but I did want to get the brake set up. And so you can see that right here. I've got plenty of room for the hoses so I can, you know, shift this around, move it around to exactly where it needs to go. But in general, centrally mounted on the chassis and it will, it will come up a little bit higher there when it's permanently mounted. But in any event, we're good to go. So bleeding was quite an interesting bit. It wasn't too bad. There's a couple of bleeder screws. So on the, um, this is the vacuum assisted brake booster here. This I put in, this is custom. Um, it's a two channel or two valve system, one side for the front, other side for the rear. And start by bleeding this first, then work your way out to the, the four corners and pretty typical and traditional. My wife helped me. She was the, uh, the, the brake pumper there. And then I went through and traditionally bled the brakes. I do have a vacuum assisted brake bleeder, but I figured with this system, doing it the tried and true way, making sure there's no air bubbles, that's good. So this brake pedal is very, very firm. It feels great. Uh, in fact, I started the engine and tested it and you could, you could even tell the difference with the vacuum assist. It stiffens the pedal up even more. So I cannot wait to test that on the road. These brakes are just gonna be absolutely fantastic. I did have a couple of leaks here and there. Some of these fittings, some of these fittings are, are a little bit finicky. You have to, you have to tighten them down more than you think, but uh, not a big deal. So all the lines are tested, all the air is bled out of them, and we're good to go both front and rear all the way around. That is the update on the brakes. The brakes are 100% complete. Yes, check that one off the list. All right, so what's next? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this rear clam put on and get these cutouts complete so that it will fully close over the engine bay. You can actually see here, I've got some 3D scanning dots placed here and I got some spray that takes, basically is temporary uh, finish that makes this all white. And then with the dots, you can scan this and get a good image. I've already scanned this hole, but I'm gonna have to redo it, make this hole a little bit bigger, then I'll scan it, then I'll model out this, the hole I end up with in Fusion 360, and then create a, um, a reverse mold of a speed bubble. 
So I'll, I'll make something either out of carbon fiber or fiberglass and make a nice little speed bubble here to kind of close that in. So that's, that's the idea there. I'll have to do the same thing here on the other side. So before I do that, I've obviously got to put the tires back on the car, get the car wheeled out, turned around to give me just some room. Let's flip this around in the garage so I've got extra room. Unfortunately today, it's kind of raining and nasty out there, so I can't wheel this out today, but uh, I'll have to do that hopefully maybe tomorrow. And then I can put this body back on and then start to get this trimmed out so that I can get this fully closed over the rear of the car.